In this video, we'll be looking at some software you may like for your FreeBSD desktop. First, we're going to be looking at OctoPKG, which is basically a GUI for your package management. So instead of using the command line like we're typing in now, which is ironic because you need to type in the command line to actually get it going first time, you get a nice little presentation like this, very much in the same kind of vein as what you find on GhostBSD. It'll enable you to install, deinstall, and upgrade your software on your system uh, instead of using the terminal, which is the more traditional way. And a lot of perhaps um, FreeBSD purists won't like using a GUI, but you know, I think we'd need one. Octo PKG version 0.4.1. And yeah, it's using Qt 6.9.3. A nice little program it is too. Um, basic menu items, you get latest BSD news, check updates, install updates, clean local cache in case you know you download a lot of stuff over time. I exit, you got search by name, description, or by file. The actions you can apply and cancel, but the grayed out because we're not doing out. Usage, donate, and about, which you've seen. Uh, donate if you want to help the cause. And usage, which is interesting because it opens a nice little tab uh, in the middle there. And it just shows you it's basically a little online manual, which is pretty good. Online in the sense that, you know, you can have a look at it now. You don't have to be online to do it, but, you know. Uh, there's your little uh, color corresponding key. And you got your locked install package, a non-install package, and an outdated package if it needs updating. I think it's pretty intuitive. I don't think you really need to be told everything. But there's a lot of keyboard shortcuts, which is good if you're into that. So yeah, I like it. The info tab tells you about each individual program that's installed. Um, not installed, but it just gives you information. You know, whatever license it is, and more information if it's got a website. Your files tells you what each particular package contains and where they put them, which is really useful. Uh, like, you know, you got you know, like um, basic box. It tells you everything where everything goes. You got actions, it's to be removed or to be installed. Output is once that's happened. No news at the moment, but this is where you get latest FreeBSD news and usage we've seen. You go to the news and you can refresh it and it will pull down the latest FreeBSD news, like the FreeBSD at the time of the video, 15.0 RC4 available. And as I'm putting this video together, I think it's just been released. So uh, yeah, that's cool. So let's say for instance, uh, you want to install something. And well, first we need to refresh the, uh, the, the database, the package tree to make sure we're pulling the latest tree. And after we put the system password in, it will pull down the latest list and see if there's any updates we need to uh, install. So it gives you in this window, this output, it gives you like a little version of what happens in the command line anyway, if you do it by hand. Oh, at the bottom there, it says there's 12 updates to be done. You can create a boot environment for backup in case anything goes wrong, you can roll back. So I won't update at the moment. I'll do that later. But say we want to install something, um, let's have a look. You just click on that little bar at the top where the cursor is flashing. You type in the name of what you want, it will come up obviously. And you click it, and if it's installed, you can install it. But what I like about this, it's the same with GhostBSD of course, is that you don't need to type in a full word. If you just type in Abbey, it will come up with everything else with ABI in it, regardless of what you want. Abbey Word explicitly will, will come up with Abbey Word. You can lock your installed package in case you, I don't know, you, you, don't want to, you don't want to upgrade it and you don't want to accidentally uninstall it. So it's locked. You type in Abbey Word again and there's a little symbol next to it and it tells you it's locked and you can unlock it again, obviously. And you can reinstall it or remove it. So overall, it's a neat little little addition really on let's say a lot of purists maybe will say oh no you should always do it command line and that has its place but i think in this case for new users on the say freebsd desktop i think this could be invaluable because um you know nothing more scary than command line if you've never used it before 
So I do like Octo PKG. Um, it's commendable indeed. Next is QWinFF, which is, a, yeah, again, it's another front end to a command line program. And this is a front end to FFmpeg. So with this, there's some um, very simple menu items. You've got file, and you can add files, and there's options to change things and exit at the bottom. You've got edit, a lot of grayed out, but you can remove completed, and there's various sort of things you can do with a file if, once you've loaded them in. Convert if you need to uh, convert one file to another. And quite a lot of about. You've got about Qt. That's 5.15.18. And then you've got an about FFmpeg, 6.1.2. And a lot of uh, switches that are enabled in the compiled version. It shows you all the codecs supported, which is, oh, yeah, more than enough. And we've got about QWinFF, which is, this version, 0.2.1. All right. And you've got the translators who work on different language versions, which is very useful if English is not your first language. And yes, a very simple layout. And what we do, and I've, I've got a little folder already lined up with a sample video file in it, he says. Right, it's going to zoom out and open up. You know, when you pre-plan something, it never... Right, there we go. I didn't think it was going to open up then. So I've got a folder with a file already in it. It's an MOV file. And it's just really just a, a, a quick B-roll of a video I did a while back about installing FreeBSD on an old Mac Mini. So I want to convert it from an MOV to, I don't know, something else. Perhaps a little bit more efficient, smaller, whatever. So we drag along the file to that. And it's in my RAM disk at the moment, so it's going to be converted there. And you can add files and delete files manually if you want, rather than dragging them over. Uh, clicking on Next will allow you to change it to uh, any of these particular formats if you want. And it's in an MOV, so I'm going to choose AVI, good old uh, Microsoft standard. And you can change the individual options of the AVI if you wish. You can leave it as it is, pretty good defaults. And there's the command line options if you want to go as it is. Gives you a choice where you can uh, save the file or convert the file. Um, output to source folder is particularly useful if you don't want to lose things. And we'll click finish and hopefully. When we click start, it will work. I think that's, that's really quick. So we just convert, oh, there we are. Now we've got two. So we converted the MOV file into an AVI file. I think there was a size difference. Let's have a look. That's 1.9 uh, megabytes. And that is 25.6. So a little bit of difference there. So yes. Very good, and just to show that it works, uh, VLC. Yeah, we zoomed in, of course, but, you know, it works fine. Anyway, if you found this video useful, then please uh, leave a like, leave a comment, and if you leave a comment and a like for more than one of my videos, then please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.